when the Germans blitzed London was in 1941, 40 and 41. So you were born in the summer of 41? Uh, August 41, yeah. So in theory, well, that meant that the first sort of six months of your life, there was stuff falling in on the crib all the time? We lost all the tiles on our house twice and all the windows once. Wow. All the glass in the windows. And there were other people on the street, like their houses? Oh, yeah, yeah. It was a regular street, just like here. Right. Um, and that we were at 39, and 51 uh, was a direct hit. Wow. And all I remember was a pit. It was like a huge hole in the ground. There was nothing, like nothing, just a big hole. Was the, was the family killed? Or? Yes. Wow. Yeah. And it, it was all at night, right? Or yeah, there yeah. Daytime raids as well. As far as I know, that well... I think there were there were daytime ones, yeah. uh, but I mean I mean God I'm only like one or two yeah. at this point. Yeah. I don't really remember <laughs> what was day and what was night. Yeah. yeah. So it says the ceiling fell down. Yeah. Well, this was this this story is that I'm in a cot right. in my parents' bedroom, right. and uh, I started crying, and my dad came in, picked me up, and took me out. And immediately afterwards, the ceiling came through and went right through the cot, like it took the bottom of the cot out. Whoa. Yeah, I mean, like huge, you know, massive hunk of ceiling. So, like, what happens after that? Does Granddad then have to go up there and fix it? No, they, well, I think they had sort of, you guys know, war damaged guys, <laughs> you know, I don't know quite what happened. Yeah, I mean, they must have had, I mean, I don't know, but they yeah. must have had sort of teams of war damaged people. Yeah, like, I that wonder if insurance would cover that. It, or, it, it, it was nothing. Was it? No, yeah, it's insurance just. Insurance wasn't even involved. It no, was the country just, would take care yeah, of it. They would the, yeah, the state would people. take care of it somehow. I mean, I don't know how, but it did. Well, you know. So this was the sort of, in theory, it would have killed me. Right. And just for some reason, you woke up. I woke up, I cried. Dad, Dad came and got me. The ceiling went through the thing. Wow. Yeah. Absolutely. And at this point in time, you're just this is before Rob was born. Oh God, yeah. yeah. Like Rob yeah. wasn't born until 1945. Right. Till you at the end of the war. Yeah. Yeah. I was three and a half when he was born. Right. Right. Um, right. Okay. So now we're talking. Now we're talking about sleeping in a drawer in the Andersons. Okay. Home. Well, uh, in those days, at the you had an Anderson, what they called an Anderson shelter. Yeah. Which was a bum shelter. Right. that the state supplied mm -hmm. and you installed. Right. So you had to dig a hole four feet deep and then you put these sort of big galvanized pieces of metal in and they had a door and all this kind of shit. And then you covered it with, I don't know how much dirt on top of it. Well, what you got out of the hole you put on top. Right. And you shared it between neighbors. So mm -hmm. this shelter was like the Catholics live next door and so, you yeah, know, there was a fence. So they took the fence away and this thing sat in the middle. Hmm. Yeah. And you'd go there, you'd have what they call, a, they'd have a, a bomb, a warning, you know. Right. The, the, the air raid sound. A siren would go off. Right. And you'd all go down there and sit in this bloody thing. It wasn't very big. It was, I don't know, like, you know, 12 by 12 or something. I mean, it wasn't right. a very big place. And there was bunk beds in it where my mum and dad and they used to both sleep. Right. And then I slept in a drawer. So how many of you would be in the shelter at once? Well, how the, many in their family? Okay, there were, well, uh, during the war there was Michael, which was, he was a bit younger than me. Right. So it'd be Dorothy and Bernard, that would the be adults. them, the adults, my mum and dad, me and uh, Michael. Right, so six of you. Yeah, but I mean, the kids would fit on like, you yeah, know, I mean, babies. Like, yeah, 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 I mean, like, yeah. yeah, I mean, literally a chest of drawers, so, you know, that's it. Wow. And no toilet, no nothing, yeah. like, just, and no electricity. So when the war ended, you still had the shelter? Yeah, yeah, it was still there, and I mean, and a lot of people kept them. Right. As a, like, gardening shed. Right. Well, you know, like, you could sort of yeah, convert yeah. it's it. There, and put you your know. bikes in it and yeah. stuff, yeah. I don't know, it was, uh, but I don't know why. Well, I suspect it was because it was ours, because it was between two, two things, and it was the entrance was on our side, not their side. Right. Uh, I don't know, but anyhow, it went away, and I'm I'm sure the government sort of 
there was a scheme where they took them. You know, yeah, yeah, they recycled. Yeah, they would take all these whatever. bits of corrugated yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. And you say here that mum and dad were happy. Mum and dad happy. Well, and it's a period. <laughs> yeah, but they seemed to. That, that's the sort of impression I had. They were happy. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, you know, they weren't sort of... When, when did they get married? 1939, so beginning you were of born, the war. you were born two years after they were married, so yeah. they were still kind of in the honeymoon side of their relationship. Well, sort of. I mean, it, when you think of it in terms, in our terms, like, yeah. they bought a house which they moved into on their marriage. Wow. Okay. Yeah, and I mean, you think about it. Yeah. Like, it was, you know, it was brand new, cost 739 pounds and you know they moved into it they bought it and sort of got married and moved into the house like kind of right. you know that was right. what they did well, uh, i guess that's what we did though isn't it yeah you did <laughs> yeah you did you did but yeah. like i but didn't I was older on. but i didn't no yep. for example and a lot of people didn't yeah. you just you know but and in those days a hell of a lot of people didn't yeah and it was brand new wasn't some so granddad had a good job well he had yeah he worked at a place called hall and hall which was an engineering he was a tool maker yeah i mean it's sort of i don't even know how to equate that job now yeah like i mean i don't know what the equivalent would be right but yeah i mean he'd done his apprenticeship he yeah he was like Ma yeah. Okay, yeah and then during the war, he had to make aeroplanes or guns or something. Right. You know, it was a what, a sheltered occupation or whatever they call it, right. Right. where you know you you changed didn't, your business and no, yeah, you worked at the same place, but you made different things. Yeah. But you didn't get called up to the army, right? Right. So he didn't go in. And didn't did nanny work? Nanny when was they met, when they were married when they got married. No, mm -hmm. once they had me, she never worked. She only worked as a dinner lady. Oh, I know, when I was in my sort of yeah, early teens kind of thing. Right? Yeah. Yeah, no, she's a dinner lady at a school. Oh, right. They used to prepare the school dinners. Right. Um, uh, but no, she didn't really work. Uh, you know, in those days, you got married, you had children, and you sort that of didn't your, work. Yeah, yeah that, that was your job. job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So cycling in Minehead. Okay, well, this was... The, the I mean, I don't even know if I really remember or whether it was just sort of hearsay. Right. But because mum and dad had met in this cycling club called the Highway and Byway Cycling Club, the, the secretary of which was my uncle Ron, my mum's brother. Okay, okay. So they met there. My um, dad's... My dad's brother Jack met Dorothy there. And my dad's brother, Harold, met Rosabel there. They all met their wives at the same cycling club? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, I'm anyhow, sure it was just a cycling well, club. No, it was a club, <laughs> cycling club. And um, so, yeah, so that's, so anyhow, so they, they, they didn't have a car. Yeah. They rode bikes. Right. Mum used to ride like, uh, she had a, an upright an upright and she had a back seat on it for me right and my dad had a, a on his on the crossbar yeah you know just before the handlebar he yeah. built a seat and that's where i rode right. if it was on his bike and then this holiday they went on holiday and i was four so i don't know whether the war had, no just the war hadn't the war. ended but it was about, and it sounds weird like one minute you get your roof blown off in your house you know and then like <laughs> The next minute, you go on a flipping cycling holiday in, in, in Somerset. Anyhow, they went on this cycling holiday, and Dad built me a sidecar. Right. And I rode in the sidecar on his, with his bike. <laughs> and he had a Merlin, hand-built, chrome frame. Nice. Yeah. Well, he did the London to Bath. Okay. In five hours or what? It was 100 miles. Right. Yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. No, they were so serious. I mean, they went every weekend. So, I mean, it's a different era, but like, that's what you did. Yeah. You know, you went to the the pub and the club meeting once a week, yeah. and you cycled on the weekend. You know, on Sunday or whenever the hell they went cycling, <laughs> and they did it like. But it was cheap, 
Oh, it didn't cost anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had a bike, fine, go yeah. ride it. And I mean, my dad rode to, rode to work every day of his life, like, even after he had a car. He rode his bike. I mean, he eventually went by car. Oh, he actually eventually used to car put, he'd go with his friend Bert King, would give him a ride. But like, he used to ride to work. An awful lot. Yeah, pretty, a lot, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, so Uncle Victor and Aunt Joan. Well, um, Auntie Joan married Uncle Victor. Uncle Victor was a part of pilot, flew Spitfires as pathfinders. So you'd fly out, drop the flares, then the bombers would come and bomb whatever they were bombing. And one day he didn't come back. Right. So that was it. So Victor McConnell, you know, I don't know how long they were married. Not that long. No. And did they get married before or after Nanny and Granddad? That's right? what I'm trying to remember. Right, because they were married. I think it was time. after, because Joan was younger than Mum. Right. Yeah, I think it was after. Yeah, anyhow. But they, she was only married for a couple of years before you passed Yeah, away. yeah, before he got killed, yeah. Um. Okay. Toys made by Dad, including a double-decker bus. Yeah, well, that was the sort of weird thing about my dad, because he's a toolmaker. You know, you know he made trains, right? Yeah. So he made trains and he made racing cars. Yeah. And I mean, he could make, he could literally could make anything. And he also had lathes and all this shit. So like, I mean, he made me a double-decker bus, like this big. Wow. Oh yeah. <laughs> wow. Like you, have, you put sort of teddy bears in it yeah, and yeah, stuff, yeah, you know, yeah. like and sort of push and it, it around. it was bent metal and all that? No, like it was wood. Oh, okay. Made out of plywood. Oh, neat. Yeah, he made me a tricycle, right. like wood and metal. Obviously, the yeah. you know, nah, 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 nah. But, but you know, a tricycle, it, it didn't have like a chain, right? Yeah, it had the right pedals right. on the front wheels, right? Okay. So he he made that. He made all kinds of shit. Like he'd make anything. Wow. But that was his sort of metier. I mean, like as I say, I mean, part of his apprenticeship, you had to make your own tools. Yeah. So they made sort of sets, not set squares, squares yeah. and gauges, like yeah. not just sort of spanners. I mean, he'd make things Machine like, tools. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. pretty serious things. Huh. Yeah. So he just could make it, he just like made it. Yeah, I mean, it's odd now when you yeah. think now, and like, it's the same as like car tuning. Like, I mean, we, they, in those days, nobody ever went... You didn't have so, a computer to plug it in. No, no, and you didn't well, have... this is what's wrong. Here. Yeah, no, but you also didn't have... Like, I mean, you just... There was no thought about it. Like, I mean, my dad, I remember we had a Triumph Vitesse, which was a fairly serious... I, in fact, used to drive it. Right. And it was aluminum bodywork. The whole thing? Oh, really? Yeah, which was its thing. Yeah. And it was sort of like a GT, wow. a long bonnet, twin carbs... And anyhow, my dad, um, he took the block out, like the whole, he, he re, um, the re-bore, the, re-bore the engine. Wow. Yeah, put like bigger cylinder heads yeah, and yeah, all yeah. that shit. But I mean, I remember him, like, he had a rope over a pulley in the garage and he, you, him and the guy that burned next door pulled it out and you get it out and then you do whatever the fuck you do to it and, and then you put it back again. But I mean, they just... It was so different when you think about it. Like now, like you don't know how to do anything. I know he, I had no less than my dad, but more than you. Yeah. But like they, you know, like you, you fix things. Like that's how it worked. Or you didn't. If you didn't, then but you had a mate who knew how to do those things. You know? yeah, yeah. So yeah, it was kind of useful. <laughs> that's cool.